more lies. Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 apostrophe with week 501. We are officially over that 500 hump and uh, who knows, man, how long it will go. But for the moment, we're just having fun and we are in the midst. Of course, for me, it's Sunday. For you, it is Wednesday. And uh, it is, in the, we are in the middle of a uh, theme week. If you didn't notice, it is Independent Love. So this is the week that we get to give some love to independent filmmakers. And I decided, I had, I had to get this one. I have not had this one in my collection until just recently. But uh, Dark Sky Films uh, put out a pretty, <laughs> pretty incredible release here. Uh, of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Now, this is uh, 1986. This is a John McNaughton film. Uh, his first of uh, a few films that would come down the pike, but this is his first, and it is independent to the core. And it is a lot of things to the core. Uh, you kind of get to the core of, uh, or at least in a sense, um, you get... Uh, kind of get to uh perhaps possibly know maybe a little bit um of henry lee lucas for whom the film is loosely uh based upon and uh his exploits um the murders uh, that he committed or may not have committed but it is a a study in character uh and it is not an easy watch it is um it is a tough watch uh in fact this movie has never gotten a regular rating uh it is unrated uh it was going to be given either an x or an uh nc-17 um and for which the filmmakers decided uh you know i mean leave it unrated the film remains intact it won't be uh edited cut down censored uh from what it is and uh and they ran with it and uh it took some time it sat on the shelf for about three years uh, and then, but finally, it saw the light of distribution, uh, and boom, it became, once it hit the video shelves, MPI, uh, distribution, or, uh, VHS, uh, once it hit the video shelves, and I remember, uh, I can remember, this is one of those movies that I rented as a kid and had absolutely no business renting and bringing home, um, fact i don't even think i got through it all I, it seems like i would have just shut that thing up probably right in a run no no i do remember seeing it because i remember i remember my stomach just dropping at the very concluding moment the last framing shot of the movie and i thought to myself my god what have i just watched uh this movie man i can i can i can talk a lot but let me just peek to the release here real quick uh because i was i'm pretty impressed with this man uh dark skies man uh stephen thrower uh wrote us a little bit of an article in this book uh which is uh inside i highly 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 recommend if this is a film for whatever reason uh you have wanted in your collection this is a great release man um this is a great release reversible cover art um the extras on here man uh and i dove into quite a few of them uh in fact i listened to the commentary by director john mcnaughton uh in defense of henry uh an appreciation uh including uh quite a few people are on that one speaking to the merit of henry as a film uh joe bob briggs is one of them um he's on there um uh do 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 um there's another one here i can't remember the name of it um it might be um no it's not that one um oh yeah henry at the uh bbfc an interview with nightmare usa author stephen thrower uh is on here and that is a great uh i was not expecting that but that is uh quite i don't know runs 20 25 minutes or something um it's you it's either you or them an interview with artist joe coleman i did not get through all of that but what i saw was pretty uh enlightening um the the commentary is great um by mcnaughton um and of course uh portrait the making of henry uh and uh, a few select interviews with mcnaughton and i also want to add uh 
Joe Bob Briggs, I mentioned him. Um, you know his series he runs on Shutter. Well, if you and I'm going to provide the link down for those of you who have Shutter via Prime or just Shutter as an app. Um, his series, just Joe Bob, basically takes the the meat of his comment throughout the running of the film and just brings the comments together. So instead of spending two and a half hours, almost three hours, uh, you just it, it's brought down to you know a more edible 50 minutes say uh and anyways uh just joe bob um he covered henry porch with a serial killer and let me say you want to learn something about independent film you want to learn something about uh mcnaughton and just his experiences and putting this thing together uh and uh, listen to that it's about 50 minutes it is well worth it the link is down obviously you have to have shutter or the link's probably not going to work for you right um but I highly suggest, man, you uh, you take a listen to that. In fact, he has McNaughton on there for, I think, two segments uh, talking to him. And that is a quite a remarkable uh, time that Joe Bob spends with him. Uh, so, I mean, so, uh, you know, quite a lot of opportunity to sort of dig down deep into this film and its structure, how it was made. And, uh, um, yeah, so you know, let's, let's just get into this a little bit. Um if you've never seen Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, uh, really loosely based on the exploits of uh, Henry Lou Lucas, uh, you know, once he was uh, arrested, I think for gun possession, he started to confess to like every single crime that he found out was in the news. And, uh, and I think it got to a point where it was a ridiculous number of like 350. Um, no one knows exactly how many people he killed. It's probably around a dozen or so, which is enough in of itself uh right including his mother um and he's got a horrific childhood man um it, you know in the movie it's portrayed uh that his mother was a prostitute and forced him to wear girls clothes and watch her carry on her acts if he didn't or resisted she would beat him well you know that could have a real detrimental effect on your child as your child grows up and this did have quite a terrible effect on Henry. And this, like I said, is a real study into the character and the nature of man's inherently simple nature, which I believe, uh, but run amok, man, unrestrained. But for Henry, it is a bit restrained, which is weird to say, but even he has his lines that he won't cross. This doesn't help those who come across his pathway, but Otis, or as Joe Bob refers to him as Otis, uh, which in real life, um, sort of his sidekick, wannabe uh, there. They met each other in jail. And uh, his, uh, in the film, um, Otis's sister, uh, her character, Becky, uh, Tracy Arnold, um, Tom Towles, of course, plays Otis, uh, and Michael Rucker, man, plays Henry, man. He, man, I'm telling you, man, he, he, he is out of this freaking world. Um, in terms of what he brings to the screen and, and uh tracy arno plays becky man she is awesome tom towels is awesome they really do bring um some very interesting moments in this film and so uh you sort of um you sort of begin with with um i think the first opening scene is a is a picture of a body um a naked uh body uh, with the exception of socks, uh, I think she they never identified her. I think she was just known in the police report as Orange Socks. Um, and we 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 sort of see as it has already happened a a trail of victims that we'll suddenly just see images from, and we'll see Henry. We'll catch up with him at a diner as he's wrapping up um, a meal, a coffee, or something, whatever. And as he exits uh, that place we're seeing on the one hand we're seeing imagery of the atrocities that he has committed but on the other side we're seeing a man that if you met on the street you wouldn't even think twice uh to do something nice for i mean unless of course you <laughs> said something that was not really agreeable to him now Otis, though Otis, uh is his sidekick he he's his when he when he allows himself to just, he ultimately will embrace his inner darker side and he will embrace it to the point where he will run amok with it 
to the point where it crosses many boundaries, even for even for Henry. And you just know, man, as this movie begins, uh, from the moment you meet Becky, you just know that we are headed towards a very dark, dark end. And there's never really a moment where you, you because of all this, that you, there's no redeemable quality about Henry really at all. I mean, it, it, it's, there's nothing redeemable. But Ada seems to, his, his debauchery is unrestrained uh, in just a reckless way that, um, it's it's sickening to the core, and uh, and these are a few things that Henry resists ultimately. Although he can't resist everything because, I mean, he's just yeah. I mean, you know, it's Henry, uh, Henry Lucas, right? Loosely based. Um, and so much of the movie, much of the movie is is really um, a character study on Henry, and. A lot of the violence is off screen, although there are a few moments that do get pretty intense. Um, there's a home invasion sequence that uh, we see via video, which has it probably its most destructive moment. Isn't what is carried out on video, it's carried out in the form of the camera panning away from the TV screen and realizing that there is Otis and Henry comfortably relaxed, just sitting on a couch watching it. Now, the scene that sort of leads into that a little prior is a scene that takes on violence in a more traditional Hollywood manner where they go to get a TV. Uh, Otis has kicked out the screen of his uh, console TV. And, uh, and so this guy, man, this guy just, he has no clue whose company he is in. But he just, man, he just, he, he treats these, these two, Otis and Henry, like, uh, like they're beneath him. And he's no winner by any stretch. And Henry's willing to take it. And he, he, he ultimately gets to the point where he looks at Otis and just says, look, this ain't going anywhere. Let's just go. Well, then this guy, man, says something. And Henry just turns, and you see the look in his face, man. You just know this ain't going to end well for this poor guy. And they do. And, and you know, and it's so, anyway, so, you know, as a, as a viewer, we're looking at this guy going, dude, you're messing with the wrong, two wrong people here. And when he gets what's coming, um, if we can go that far, uh, we're sort of um, okay with it as a viewer because of how he treats them, too. But then... Moments later, we're watching some debauchery that they committed inside of a home where they just completely uh, tortured and killed this poor family who had absolutely no idea that this was uh, that this was coming. And do any of these people ever know when real life terror invades uh, their lives? Who's to know such things? Um, and so there is a real contrast in terms of how we view violence, how we ought to view violence. Um, I think it's interesting. This movie is not a horror movie. Um, this is a movie that um, it, it, I think it, it strives to shed a little light on our inner darker selves and, 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 and provide warning that this this idea that we can kind of go through life uh, seemingly okay is it, it, it is it's a false sense of security I think um, because that's not who we really are deep in now most of us will go through life and we'll never do what Henry Lee Lucas did or any one of these people right we'll never do it um, but we will act in ways contrary to the way we want to act and we'll stop and look back and go god why why did i say it like that or why did i even say that or do that or uh whatever so it is it is an interesting film um it is an interesting film um i know i'm just sort of um i don't know let me just um you know one of the things i noticed in this movie that is uh you know, this is the first time i've really kind of sunk myself in and uh and, and viewed it probably since I was a kid and rented it and I again shouldn't have but um, it, I, I'm pretty sure Rob Zombie has uh, really sort of uh, been influenced by this and you can see certain things man uh, you know there's there's just a moment where the, you know uh, Otis and Henry are driving into the city it's raining 
and because it was filmed in 16 millimeter, you just got this sense, right? Uh, it's the aesthetics of, of, of the rain falling, the darkness, but yet the street lights. And it really so reminded me of the opening scenes in H2. Uh, there's a lot of that, man. There's a lot of that. Um, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, I don't want to really give away the end. I'm sure there's some out there that have kind of veered around this and, and it's a film that probably should be unless you are unless you're really interested in independent filmmaking and you and you want to see um when that is done excellently um if, if you want to see um the work of someone it's quite obvious McNaughton is going to go on to have a pretty good career and and, and I just have to say this with listening to the commentary listening to the extra features I, this guy just blows me away he's he's kind of got this concept of you, you you art reflects life whereas most of film we watch it's art reflecting art and it's probably why the realism of Henry is so sinister and dark and just raw it's 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 it, 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 that's the other thing man Sh chicago the south side of chicago you kind of it's like maniac you know you get to see that old gritty new york you get to see old gritty chicago via this film um and you know so there's this one scene in the movie um oh man there's this one scene in the movie where uh henry uh, has moved himself out of the apartment from where uh, Otis and Becky are and uh, just to kind of get some fresh air he will run into this lady who's walking her dog and she uh, she ultimately ends up starting to walk away after they've had a, a, a decent exchange and Henry just sits there and he just watches her and he just you know he's contemplating man and this poor lady has absolutely no clue who is standing there contemplating just completely bringing her life to an end and yet he'll choose for whatever reason to just walk off and this girl has this lady old lady has absolutely no idea of the reprieve she's been given and there's a lot of that in this movie man uh just watching uh, otis man uh he 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 has this sick uh twisted lust uh for his sister which uh, crosses the boundary with henry and ultimately i'm just i'll say like this this will this will ultimately lead to otis's doom um and what a Becky. Becky has left a, a husband and a daughter, uh, a sort of um, fixed marriage in the sense that she just ran away from home, couldn't. She was abused as well. And so you've, you've just got this so much baggage. And you think maybe there's there's a, 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 a chance for Henry and Becky to find some redeemable quality, some humanity. And, and yet you just know that's not where we're headed in this thing, man. Now, I watched this movie in black and white last night, too. Um, and that had a, a, a an interesting aesthetic to it as well. And uh, I know I've, I've gone way over. I'm, I'm going to just kind of wrap things up, man. I didn't really get into the movie movie per se, but I think I've I, I sh hopefully shed enough light on it. in terms of an independent. Um, this was made for barely nothing, and yet the all what comes out on the other side is uh, quite remarkable. This movie will get butchered, and of course, part of the video nasties uh, that era. Um, um, 16 millimeter shot in 28 days for under a hundred and ten thousand um quite um yeah quite a remarkable achievement from a director who will go on and do movies like uh, wild things the borrower uh mad dog glory um uh, quite a uh, interesting filmmaker that is john the score man you hear a little bit the score is unrelenting robert mcnaughton of course brings that and uh, his no relation uh, to John McNaughton, but uh, that the, the, the score is absolutely unrelenting, and this movie is unrelenting, and it just refuses to give in at all, man. Right to the very end, in the final framing shots, it's just uh, it, Henry is an experience, and it's an experience that you you you, you got to be ready for, or maybe it's best just left alone so anyways here in uh week 501 independent filmmaking independent love i bring you henry portrait of a serial killer uh enter at your own risk man enter in your own risk as always we end these things off with go bills